answer that happened last week and uh, a lot of uh, answer uh, of racism and islamophobia anti immigrants all over the nation and it's really it hits when it comes home where all the thing everything started here in minneapolis uh, mm-hmm. with the killing of uh, uh, George Floyd and, uh, and uh, all the demonstration and it started here in Minneapolis and spread all over a major city in, uh, in the nation. Uh, now, uh, last week, we have our guest today, uh, Sophia Rashid, uh, took her uh, kids and uh, went to Stillwater like uh, thousands of people do every day, especially on the nice days, and uh, she didn't feel comfortable there. Uh, by the presence of uh, some uh, uh, group gangs and uh, of the Aryan cowboy brotherhood, uh, wherever uh, the, we don't know much about it. I don't think he knew much about it uh, uh, when when you were there. But uh, from um, uh, the uh, you know how they behave and how they they look and how they approach your family, uh, you didn't feel comfortable, so you had to. Uh, this is basically what, uh, what's written about it, uh, and uh, so welcome to the, the show, uh, Sophia Rashid. Thank much for uh, uh, for uh, giving us the time. I can imagine uh, what you've gone through in the last few days. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Um, I definitely didn't expect it to, um, you know, my story to get as much traction as it did. Um, I certainly didn't expect you know, what happened on Saturday to happen as well. Um, so yeah, it's just kind of been a little bit of a whirlwind. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, you were in restaurants, those uh, gangs, groups, uh, they were aggressive, they approached your family, but the, you know, in any way you uh, were, were under threat or been threatened. Am I correct? So, I mean, it was, it's been stated over and over again that I was uncomfortable, that I was uncomfortable from the police reports to news outlets. Um, and I very specifically said over and over that I was, I was terrified. I was, I was scared for my life, for the life of my daughter, um, and the lives of any, you know, person who is visibly a minority in Stillwater. Um, my family comes from a small town and um i i know what groups like this do i i know who they are um well, see, you, you did know who they are no i meant white supremacist groups oh, I see. um when you see aryan brotherhood you know someone ascribing to be from the aryan brotherhood you know what that is. it's very strange that you're comparing a racist uh you right. know yeah, uh, you know, dress to uh, an Islamic dress. It did not stop her from lying. She, she actually asked me why. Uh, mm-hmm. No problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, this, this is a major structure issue in this country for 300 years. And uh, it's unfortunate that you were experiencing that uh, day with your family. But how the media, uh, that false sense of uh balance and the way she handled his hand and she does that i mean this is the fake reporter a fake questions fake interview as far as i'm concerned looking at her bio she says that she's been uh, around 20 different countries she traveled to any different country and uh, I, I doubt it one of this country was an arab or muslim country so uh, i really want to focus on how the media cover you have the you have Sahan's uh, journal cover the story, report it, and you have KSTP and uh, reporter on uh, cover it, and they think they, they, you know, they did a good job. Beth McDonald, that then she did a great job and all of that. So I want to see how, you know, how do you, th- you know, uh, think of that interview and how the reporters give you chance and put you online and try to uh, to put you on defense. Uh, even if you are a victim. The modern, um, you know, media, um, you know, widely accepted media, she did a very good job. She did a very professional job. She did nothing wrong. And, and I think that's the issue, is that um, media today is seeking out this, um, you know, um, objectivity. Um, it, it's kind of like, I found it kind of comparative to, in a debate, 
between actual scientists, uh, you know, or you have actual scientists in a debate, and then you bring forward an equal number of climate change deniers or flat earthers, you know, who who say we're we're scientists too. Um, it's just you you can't have that type of objectivity when one is clearly incorrect. So I'm a, I'm a Muslim. Um, this is the dress of someone who is Muslim to equate it with someone who adheres to horrible, vi inherently violent, inherently awful uh, views and in, in, in an ideology. I mean, is just a little bit obscene. Um, and it's just, it's that underlying current of Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, racism that we have in our media and in our country at, at large. Uh, where the surprise about the setting of the mosque where it's back to right. places and the, uh, the camera anger is yeah. very casual, very uh, disconsidered to the right. and to the, the interview. So uh, how did that uh, happen? <laughs> right. Um, I just, I kind of want to add that it, it definitely felt when I eventually saw the interview um, and I kind of reflected on it, that there was kind of an attempt to... Um, uh, I don't want to say ex exactly exotify, but the controversialness that they said at the beginning of the interview or the beginning of the story, um, that I was part of that controversy, that me, my identity was part of that controversy. I was making it controversial by being and looking like who I was. And I found it very interesting that they, they wanted to take footage of me walking, you know, as if to kind of show my outfit as a whole. Um, you know, what I would look like when walking down the street. And then, you know, inside the masjid, the mosque, um, there, initially they had asked, or they said, do you, you want to do it in like the men's side of the, the masjid, that the, the male, the men's prayer room. And I was kind of like, what? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and just for anyone who's maybe not, not Muslim watching, like the, the cultural context to that is that out of respect for both genders, not a segregation, one is better than the other, we have two sides of the message, typically. Sometimes it's in one room, um, but there's always kind of two sides. But whatever um, side, the message. It, I guess the reason I, I kind of want to emphasize that is that, like you're saying, she is a journalist for 20 years, and the Muslims have been in the community for well beyond that. Um, it, it seemed like that was, again, kind of an exotic, you know, that would add to the exoticness, the controversialness, right? The polarization of the story to have that mosque background. And it was like, it was at a certain time, it was one of our prayers and I was just kind of surprised by that. And I'm like, no, we, we can't do that there. That's, in my mind, I'm like, that's really disrespectful to the, the religious space that we're in. Um, and so we Ted, uh, Ted Kozlowski from uh, you know the mayor, yeah. yeah the mayor of Stillwater. He has a very lovely letter. And he, he wrote back and he welcomed you back. And uh, I mean Stillwater is a, a is a tourist uh, town. You know. Um. He he understands the the gravity of that situation. He understands the implication of having people like the Aryan Cowboy Brotherhood. Uh, walking around, shouting comments at people, getting in, in people's faces, you know, people that they, the ideology that they cling to says they want to murder, you know? Yeah. Um, he, he does understand that. Um, going forward, um, it's my hope that both him as a leader and the citizens of Stillwater decide not to just let this slide by as a one-off incident that, you know, made a lot of noise and then Kind of fell into the background. Um, I'm really hoping that they decide to um, put forward policies and, and resolutions as a community that, yes, anyone's free to express whatever view they want. That does not mean that people are going to accept it. And just educating the business owners there. You're welcome. You know, I go to a coffee shop in Northeast called the Mojo. Mojo Coffee Gallery, you know, it's in this California art buildings, I don't know that. And uh, it's, for us as a minority or immigrants, we feel very comfortable there. Mojo for the exact same reason when I really? was in Minneapolis, like a couple, I think like a week ago. Yeah. And that's exactly how I felt, is that I was looking, um, 
because it was still very fresh in my mind. My cat was getting surgery around there. Yeah. And I specifically went to Mojo because I did feel like it was a safe space. And especially at, like a week ago, I'm still looking over my shoulder constantly because yeah. uh, of the threats I've gotten online. And yeah, like they're definitely, um, there's places where me as minorities feel welcome. And then there's places we kind of know, even as a community, we're not welcome. And that's what I really realized on Saturday where I'm like, you know, the, fir the first response when I told, um, you know, my husband what happened, uh, he was with a group of brothers. They were like, still water why did you go to still water <laughs> like don't you know that we don't belong there no no and no. that kind of got well that got me thinking yeah. so i started to kind of poke around and i'm connected with a lot of young sisters in the community and i asked them you know and their ages ranging from like 15 to in their 20s i said have you have you ever gone to a small town just for fun just for a day by yourself with friends with family every single one of them were like no way no way yeah. so as a community we know that there are places that are much less safe for us as a white convert mm -hmm. that you choose this um, for whatever reason in your life is and you choose uh nikah uh, mm -hmm. uh, you lost your white privilege by Converting to Islam, not so much, mm -hmm. but also by wearing uh, the niqab. Uh, were you aware? I mean, it, changed. It, it changed. So I don't think I lost. You know, I, I converted when I was seventeen. I don't think I just lost seventeen years of solid white privilege. I, I kept those seventeen years with me, which is what made me feel confident and safe for the most part going into Stillwater when the most of my community doesn't. It's because I've been to Stillwater before. I grew up going there. I still get that. I think one of the more powerful bits of white privilege is this confidence of, of being safe, of being free to say what you want, do what you want, participate in activities, um, and, and not being hurt. Um, and, that's, and to give an idea of how strong white privilege is, even though I wear a niqab, even though I've been Muslim for uh, seven and a half years, um, it's still a learning process for me to realize how other white people see me, you know, and not all white people, but a lot of white people see me. Um, it's still shocking to me. Um, I'm still unlearning a lot of that, that white mentality of, of my own whiteness, if that, if that makes sense. So Stillwater for me was, was incredibly surprising, where frankly, in the Muslim community, the outrage has not been so much in the Muslim community. We're upset about it, but they're like, oh yeah, like, it's not surprising, sadly. We experience so much of this, it's not surprising. It's the white people that are so surprised and outraged, for the most part. Because they're like, what? This doesn't happen? It's, it's actually pretty common for us, just in not, not no, normally so overt. Um, but yeah, I, I, I definitely, it's, it's an interesting place to be in, having one foot um, kind of both sides. Because I know what it's like to experience Minnesota as a white person. And it's really, I mean, it's beautiful. And now I know what it's like to experience Minnesota as someone who's not typically seen as a white person. And it's horrifying a lot of the times. Uh, uh, Sophia, uh, everybody's wearing a mask these days. I mean, the world is wearing a mask. I don't know what was the prize for a Muslim woman wearing a hijab. Actually, Trump was... Uh, they start wearing a mask now. Everybody looks Muslim in a way. So we are in a very strange time for uh, for, a little bit, yeah. for this to be a major issue. And 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 uh, and somebody is uh, you know uh, is choosing to wear a certain way based on their uh, religious uh, belief. Uh, be compared to, to to a group of people made the conscious decisions. To to uh, to to wear dresses that uh, symbolize racism and and criminal uh, activities and the idea of this fake objectivity, fake. Uh, every story uh, has two sides. I think they teach them in a, in a, in a, in a, in a uh, journalism school, and everybody always look at the other side. I don't know why you should look at the other side when one side obviously in the wrong. So. Thank you for that, Sophia, uh, and say salamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as-salam.